to work out the even problems for this test review, but I also noticed that a couple of these problems you may need some assistance with because we talked about it, but for whatever reason you guys have slept since the last time we met. So let's work a couple of these out. Number one, it says calculate the molar mass for this cobalt Roman numeral two chloride solution that actually happens to be a hydrate. Now again, when we talked about hydrates earlier on, we talked about what that dot right there represents. This dot right here does not represent a multiplication sign. This dot represents that you have a hydrate and that water is chemically attached to it. So when you see a dot like this, you want to be thinking that's a plus sign. So we're going to add the mass of the cobalt chloride to the mass of these six waters. So that's a real easy point to earn, but you don't want to lose it because of multiplying something. So let's take a look at the values for cobalt. And cobalt's over here. So cobalt 58.93. So we have 58.93 grams for cobalt. We have two chlorines, which is 35.45 grams. Plus, that's what this is right here. Plus, we're actually going back. Now here's where we get to multiply it. Six times the mass of water, which I'm sure you've worked with numerous times is 18.016 grams. How did I get that? Well, I know that each hydrogen is 1.008 grams plus one oxygen, which is 16. So two times 1.008 plus 16, 18.016. So the reason why I wanted to work this out together with you is to keep you from making that a multiplication sign. The only time that we're going to multiply is when we multiply those six waters together. So let's get it. So the molar mass is 237.926 grams, and that's per mole. Now, again, since we generally do something with that molar mass or molecular mass, we don't want to round that off. But if you did, I'd be okay. But more importantly, show your process. Don't just type in on your calculator and spit that number out. I want to see how you're getting these values. Let's look at number two. Calculate the molar mass for iron three carbonate. Again, you're doing something very, very similar as up here, except in this case, I actually gave you the elements and the actual formula. When you see it in word form, you have to remember, ooh, I need to remember my 10 polyatomics. Oh, I need to remember what that Roman numeral means. Ooh, I need to remember what my 52 elements are. So when looking at this, you have to remember a lot of things because we're going to still be using this throughout the year. So iron, Fe, and in this case, since it has a Roman numeral 3, that means that you're going to have a plus 3 charge. Carbonate ends in ATE. That means that's one of your 10 polyatomics, so CO3. What's the charge on carbonate? Negative 2. Does that equal 0? No, it does not. So that means I need three of these and two of these to equal six. So I want to put this in parentheses, put a three there, and I need a two there. So there's a lot involved with this, this type of problem. So you can't just write FeCO3. You have to balance the charges out. Once you have the charges balanced out, let's figure out what the molecular mass is. So we have two times, and iron is 55.85. Grams, and that'll be added to one times three carbons, and that'll be added to three times three, which is nine oxygen, and we'll decide or determine so that, that equals two ninety one point seven three grams. And again, since it's a molar mass, we really don't want to round that too much if at all. So with molar masses, it's okay to write out as much as you want. But more importantly, you have to balance the charges. Let's look at number four. Calculate the number of moles of for 723 grams of magnesium phosphate. Again, you're not given the formula, so you need to know how to write this compound out. Magnesium. Okay, magnesium, not manganese. So magnesium 
Looks like that. Actually, move that down a little. Phosphate, that's one of your 10 polyatomics, PO4. Make sure you know the charges for each of these. You can go to the periodic table and find magnesium, but you cannot go to the periodic table to find phosphate. Phosphate is one you have to memorize. That's a negative three. Magnesium is a plus two. So that means I need three of those and I need two of those. So I'm going to put that in parentheses and put a three there. So once you have the formula, you're almost home. So now we need to find out how many moles. So we start with our 723 grams of the compound we just wrote out for, so magnesium phosphate. Let's find out how many moles we have. So in one mole of magnesium phosphate, you have to determine the empirical, I'm sorry, the, the molar mass for that. So magnesium, it's like 24 point something, don't have that memory. 24.3, so we have 24.3 grams, plus we have, oops, sorry, we have 24.3 grams, but we also have to multiply that by 3, because we have 3 of them, and we'll add that to our 2 phosphorus, which is 30.97, and we'll add that to 4 times 2, which is 8 oxygen. I'm going to find the molar mass for that. That is 262.84 grams. So again, I don't want to round that value. So now I'm going to take 723 divided by 262.84. So 2.7, yeah, we'll say 2.75 moles. And again, you don't have to rewrite the magnesium phosphate for that, but you definitely have to show the unit moles. Also, while you're working these problems out, be sure to show the units as you're working. Every single one of these that has a value in it better have a unit. So don't get lazy and start just, uh, I don't want to write a G there. I don't want to write a G there. I don't want to have to write MOL. Guys, it's worth points. It's easy points. So be sure to do that. Number six, calculate the number of molecules for 3.55 moles of chromium, what is that, six sulfate? Now, if you know your sequence, and you should, again, the sequence is some metric unit, could be kilograms, milligrams, micrograms, nanograms, whatever, you're going to convert that to grams, because again, everything on your periodic table is in grams, so whatever mass I'm giving you, get it to grams, convert it to grams, and then from grams, you're going to convert to moles. From moles, you're going to convert to molecules. And if needed, you'll convert that to atoms. And you can also work in the reverse direction. So if I'm giving you atoms and you need to know how many molecules, you can do that. Or find out how many moles it is. Or even find out how many grams. Or even worse case scenario, find out how many kilograms. But the most important thing on this journey is that you go one way. Find out where you're starting. So you have 3.55 moles. That means my journey begins here. If I'm looking for molecules, I'm not going back to find out how many grams I have. I'm going forward to find out how many molecules. So my journey is going to go this way and that way only. So don't think to yourself, wow, I have to do something with this. Okay? I promise I'm going to give you something on the test that's so much more ugly than that. I promise. In other words, we don't even care what this is. That is so insignificant for this question. If you look at it, how many molecules in 3.55 moles of anything? We don't care how many atoms are in a molecule. We care about how many molecules are in a mole. So don't do too much work. Ask yourself, where am I at? Where am I going? How many steps do I need to go? One. So in that case, start with your 3.55 moles of what? Don't care. So don't spend your time trying to balance out what chromium-6 sulfate is. That's great if you do for a question that's asking for the molar mass of that. So in this case here, we know that we want to get rid of the unit mole. So where are we going? We're moving it diagonally. And also remember that this sequence will be on the top when you're working out the problem. 
So don't ever confuse yourself and go, ooh, where's mole go? It's not what you're looking for, move it diagonally. Also remember, the only time you use Avogadro's number is when you're converting moles to molecules. So don't get creative and go, oh, there's 6.02 times 10 to 23 moles in one molecule. Don't do that. Come on. And then make sure you know how to use your calculator. So 3.55 times 6.02 times 10 to 23, whatever that equals. And if you don't know how to get that value, you need to see me before the test. Not the day of the test, before the test. We don't want to not know how to use our calculator, especially when you've been doing this homework all this time, allegedly. All right, so the value is 2.1, we'll say 4 times 10 to the 24. And again, that is molecules. Okay, so 2.14 times 10 to the 24 molecules. Calculate the number of moles of titanium 3 chlorate that are dissolved in 4.22 liters of a 12.5 molar solution. Here we go again. Okay. If you know the volume and you know the molarity, do we? We know the molarity. We know the volume. If you know the volume and you know the molarity, you always start with the volume. So in this case, we're going to start with the 4.22 liters. Okay. The question is asking for moles. Be sure you know what molarity stands for. Molarity is moles divided by liters. So if I'm making a salt water solution, I need a certain number of moles of salt. And I'm going to dissolve it in a certain number of liters. So in this case, if I had a 12.5 molar solution of salt water, that means I'm going to have 12.5 moles of, of salt, and I'm going to have one liter of water. So what that means is that number there is going to go on top, 12.5 moles for every liter. Now, it's for a titanium 3 chlorate. Do I need to find what titanium 3 chlorate is? Absolutely not, because what am I looking for? The moles. Am I looking for grams? No. If I'm looking for grams, I need to know what that is. If I'm looking for molecules, I need to know what that is. Actually, I don't need to know what that is. If I'm looking for grams, I need to know what that is. If I'm finding atoms, then I need to know what that is. But here, we just cancel out you like units, that times that, you have your moles. And we'll say it's 52.8 moles. Okay. Again, read the question. I would like box in important information, circle other things. Do the work. Do the work. Number 10, calculate the molarity of a sodium acetate solution where one kilogram of sodium acetate, gave it to you, is dissolved in enough water so that the final volume is two liters. Okay. Again, molarity is moles over liters. So in this case, we actually have quite a bit of information here. Some of you are not going to be able to find the volume for this question. And especially during the test, you're going to freak out because the volume is not in a number value. Or it's not written as a number. But the number of liters is on here. And you have to train your eye to find how many liters you have. Okay? Also, your eye may not find a mass. You may just look at this and stare at this for a long time and not realize I also am given a mass. It's not grams, but I'm going to do something with that. So again, if I have my sequence, I'm going to kilograms, and I need to find out how many moles. This is the path in which I'm going to take. And that's the path in which you do want to take. So I'm given one kilogram. Actually, let me move this over here and out of the way for a while. Actually, let's bounce it off the wall there. Okay. So I have one kilogram of sodium acetate. One kilogram. I need to find out how many moles I need of this. So I'm looking for moles. So I need to change the kilograms into grams. Which one's bigger? 
or kilograms is always bigger, and there's 10 to the 3 grams. That is a conversion that you will use a lot. So get to know it. Make sure that you're putting the right value in the right spot. All right, so now I'm going to move my unit grams down and look for moles of sodium acetate. Do not ever, do not ever write that. This, I don't know what this is. One gram? No, I don't know what that is. Get that out of here. What you need to do is find the molar mass. So you got to go to the periodic table and ask yourself, I have sodium, I have two carbons, I have three hydrogen, I have two oxygen. So it's not this one gram. That's not one gram, it's one mole. So never ever write one gram again. So sodium, 22.99 grams. Plus I have two carbons, 2.1201, or two times 1201, plus three hydrogen. Let me move this down. hydrogen and I have two oxygen so that's kind of a big one there okay so this will give us our number of moles so let's find actually I want to find the molar mass for this first so 82 point we'll say 034 is our molar mass for the sodium acetate so now I get to plug all this in. So let's find out how many moles we actually have of the sodium acetate. 12.01. So I have 12. Say 19. I don't want to round too much just yet. Okay, because that's this is not my final answer. So I need to find the molarity. So I need to find out what is my total volume again. Two liters. So I'm going to take this. I need to find the molarity, so I'm going to divide it by 2 liters. So now I have my units, moles over liters. So I'm going to take my value. In that case, I get a molarity of, we'll say, 6.10. And that's moles per liter. Okay. So again, I don't want, you'll never finish your question as we have it here on the left side of the equal sign. You always give me one number with your derived units. Don't show this as your final answer. All right. Make sure that you take it across there. Oh boy, that one looks fun. All right, number eleven. Here's some more bonus footage for you. Number eleven says a certain compound contains the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in that order. When 10.72657 gram sample was analyzed, 5.14714 grams of carbon and 1.008 grams of hydrogen were detected. What is the molecular formula for this compound if the molecular mass is 225.258 grams per mole? Again, this is pretty important. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, exactly in that order. Okay. Now, what is not nice and some of you are going to get upset by this you really are you're going to look at this 10.7 gram sample and think to yourself oh i need to do something with that 10.72657 gram sample and find out how many moles that is it's a sample of the carbon hydrogen and oxygen compound you are given this gram amount for carbon and a gram amount for hydrogen you are not given a gram amount for that's right, oxygen. So you need to find out what these two masses are added together and take the difference of that from the 10.72657 to find out your oxygen. If you don't do that, you're not going to be able to find out how many moles of oxygen you have. So that's probably one of the smartest things you should do first. So let's take our 10.72657 gram sample and subtract it from the 5.14. 714 grams of carbon and 1.008 grams of hydrogen. So do that first because this will tell you how many grams of oxygen you have. And yes, you'll see something like this on the test. I promise. I want you to be able to determine what all the masses are from information given. You can't just be a robot and go, that's grams, now I'm going to find out moles. You have to determine how many 
of the unknown, but it's given. It's not unknown. You just have to do a little bit of work. So 4.57. 5, 7, we'll say 1, 4, 3, okay? So there we have all of our elements now. So let's find out what the empirical formula is, okay? So let's do carbon. Actually, can I? Oh, of course not. 5.14714 grams of carbon. still want to show your work. One mole. And then the, is it four point? Ah, I still have that one in red. That one needs a slider down. Okay. So I don't want to rewrite that one again if I don't have to. And it's grams of oxygen. So one mole of oxygen is 16 grams. So let's find out these values here. So 0.42, we'll say 86, 0.28, 0.57 moles of that. Okay. So we need to ask ourselves which one's smaller. It appears that the oxygen is a smaller value, so 0.28. That's a one. So we have some decimals here, but we are not happy with decimals. We do not like decimals in our answers here. So we want to change these decimals. And again, actually, before I erase that, remember the benchmarks. Remember where you're going to find out what we're going to do with these. So again, the benchmarks that we're looking for is we want a value that's ends in zero, which this one does. In other words, it's 1.0. That's our ratio. Our next one would be 0 0.25, 0 0.3 repeating, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 repeating, 0.75, and of course the next value up, which would be 1. Okay? So we're looking for whole numbers. Now, when we talk about benchmarks, like in this case here where we have 3.5, okay, the decimal is the 0.5, so we need to know that that represents a quarter, that represents a third, that represents a half, that represents two thirds, and of course this represents three quarters. But really the only number that we care about is the denominator in these fractions. Okay, So we still want to change our decimal into a fraction so that we can focus on that. So now that we have our 1.5, let's change that 1.5 and that 3.5 to one and one half and three and one half. So to get rid of the fraction, we need to multiply everybody by two. What you do not need to do is multiply everybody by two times two. Since they're the same uh, denominator, excuse me, since they're the same denominator in each of those cases, just multiply everybody by two. So if I multiply that by two, I get three. If I multiply that by two, I get seven. I multiply that by 2, I get a 2. So your empirical formula okay, is C3H7. Let me write that down. C3H7O2. That is your empirical formula. Now, what is the question asking? It wants to know what is the molecular formula for this compound. So we're given the molecular formula mass as 225.258. So we need to find out what the n value is. So we need to find out what the n is here. So the n, was it 225, 225? Yeah, 225, 225.258 grams. 
and we need to find out what the molecular mass for that compound is. I'm sorry, the empirical formula mass for that compound. So we have, actually, we'll move that down. So I've got three carbons. I have three carbons plus I have seven hydrogen. Two oxygen. So that equals so that equals seventy five point zero eight six grams. So I'll take that value, bring it down here, and then two twenty five point two five eight divided by gives me a value of three. So my N here is 3, which means that I have C9H21O6. So again, even though that's not a very common value or a very common formula for you guys, find your empirical formula first. To find your molecular formula, you're going to take the molecular formula mass that's given in the problem. You will have to determine the empirical formula mass from your empirical formula and then find out what your multiplier is. And then again, multiply that by the subscripts. One more question here. The question here asks, what is the formula for a hydrate that is 89.62% um, CuWO4? That's a copper um, tungstenate. And 10.38% water. So again, you have a 100 gram sample, change those percentages into grams and find out how many moles you have. So 89.62 grams of this compound. So one mole of CuWO4. Uh, copper I don't have memorized. Copper is over there. So copper 63.55. Tungsten. Tungsten's over here. Where are you? I think it's down a little bit. There's tungsten. 183.65. 183.65. And then four oxygens. So all of that. Find out how many moles that is. And I'll find out what the molar mass of that is as well here in a moment. And 10.38 grams of water. Again, one mole of water, 18.016 grams. Okay, so let me get some numbers here. All right, so the molar mass for this is 311. Point, we'll say two grams. And when I take this divided by that, I get 0 0.28, 28, we'll say 798 moles. Went out a little farther. Oh well. And for the water, I get 0 0.5764. We'll say six moles. So again. Which one is smaller? And it better be the compound that is not water. So let's divide that by each. So that equals one. And I'm willing to bet 10 bucks that that one equals a two. But you still want to show it. You don't want to just go too fast. So when writing out the compound formula for this, we're going to say, We're going to say that we have CuWO4.2 water molecules. Okay? Again, if you were asked to find the molecular mass of this, treat that as a plus sign. Also, what this means is that there are two water molecules chemically attached. 
to this compound. 